Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at two untested vintage Apple laptops that I got off eBay. Whether they work, I don't actually know. So I think it's time we open the box and find out. With our trusty knife, let's open the box. Strangely enough, the box arrived mostly open. Inside we have the first of the laptops wrapped in bubble wrap. This titanium PowerBook G4 definitely needs a good cleaning. Underneath that, we've got a clamshell iBook G3, also wrapped in bubble wrap. I'll be sure to pop all of that bubble wrap in my spare time. While not very clean, the PowerBook G4 looks to be complete and mostly undamaged. The iBook G3 also looks to be in decent condition. I found a charger lying around and sadly the PowerBook G4 would not turn on. This is actually quite a common problem and is quite easily fixed. So let's take it apart. First I'm going to remove all the screws to take off the back panel. With the power adapter still attached, I gently lifted up the optical drive and unplugged and plugged back in the PRAM battery. The orange charge light finally came on. I tried powering up the laptop and it did so without any issue. After reassembling the PowerBook, I gave it a light cleaning. I also managed to rip off two of the keys, which luckily were easy to put back on. So we've got the PowerBook G4 running rather well. We'll come back to that after looking at the clamshell iBook G3. Something I didn't realize is that I no longer have a power adapter for one of these. Since the voltage and amperage match this yo-yo power adapter, I widened the plug to make it fit the iBook. It was already missing part of the plug, so I assumed someone had already done this. With the plug fitting in securely, I got a green power light. Now, will it power on? The answer is actually surprisingly yes. It booted into Mac OS 9, however it was password locked. So I'm going to have to reinstall Mac OS. I also noticed it doesn't actually have a battery installed. However, it probably wouldn't have worked anyway. Slotting the install disk into the tray, I began the installation. After a few minutes, it loaded the installer. I tried doing a password reset. However, that would have only have worked with a Mac OS 9 install disk. I formatted the original 10 GB hard disk and began installing Mac OS X. After around half an hour, I came back to find it done. I entered the required details and completed the installation. It turns out that this only has the base 64 megabytes of RAM. Still, overall, this iBook is in good condition. It's also crazy to think that macOS used to come with Internet Explorer pre-installed. Some cosmetic flaws I did notice is the fact that it's missing the stem of the Apple logo on the top and it has some cracks around the logo below the screen. Finally, I'll give the iBook a little bit of a clean to get it looking as good as I can. It's very surprising that both of these laptops actually work, without any faults minus dead or missing batteries. Looking at Apple's Australian website from March of 2001 makes you realize just how much these laptops actually cost. $5,495 for the PowerBook G4. Wow. But that money got you a very sleek and capable laptop. With super thin bezels and a screen resolution of 1152 by 768 this was a very good display. There is also an excellent selection of ports on this laptop. While this PowerBook has definitely seen a lot of use, and it does show in some areas, the hinge is still excellent and that keyboard, honestly, is nothing short of fantastic to type on. Even back nearly 20 years ago, Apple knew how to make an excellent laptop keyboard. Moving over to the iBook G3, it's hard to believe that both of these laptops were being sold at the exact same time back in 2001. Costing $2,000 less and exporting an aesthetically more chunky design, are there any other major compromises? At a resolution of only 800 by 600, this display with its massive bezels is nowhere near as good. You also got half the amount of RAM by default, and the iBook is nearly twice as thick as the PowerBook. But you did get a nifty carrying handle. It is odd however that the Apple logo is upside down when it's open. Hooking the PowerBook up to the internet was actually quite easy. Using the 10.4 Fox compatible browser made it somewhat usable. YouTube actually worked, just incredibly slowly. Typing up documents in Google Docs was also possible, but it was painfully slow and unresponsive. Technology has definitely come a long way since 2001. 
with these two machines costing a combined amount of $8,690 back in 2001, a lot has changed. The PowerBook G4 Titanium still looks sleek and modern, whereas the iBook G3 is very much stuck in the 90s with its outlandish design. Sometimes the gamble with buying untested laptops from eBay actually pays off. These two laptops will definitely make a fine addition to my ever-growing collection. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked what you've seen, definitely feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in next Saturday's video.